Les échanges dans les groupes de soutien par les pairs. Elle va nous en parler. Elle est étudiante à la maîtrise à la Faculté dentaire de l'Université McGill. Alors, on écoute Marie Vigo. We know a lot about pain. In this room, there's a lot of knowledge and expertise about pain. Uh, there's even this really great workbook that's called Working Together When Facing Chronic Pain. It's been written by over 50 chronic pain experts. There's about 400 pages of information, all backed up by academic and scientific sources. And it's really great. The goal of it is to help people living with pain, to understand the mechanisms of their pain, but also to be able to find ways of coping with it and live a better life with it. So something that's interesting is that throughout this book, the idea that peer support groups are useful for people living in pain is peppered in really quite liberally. Um, in fact, every patient um, testimonial in the book is actually written by somebody who is a part of a community support group. So if we dive into this book to see uh, what exactly are the benefits of peer support groups, this is what we see. So we've got about two paragraphs, no clear referencing, but there is one link. Um, let's, go, let's go see what this link tells us. So it's actually a broken link. There is no redirection. This is basically the end of the line for anybody wanting to learn more about peer support groups with chronic pain. So we tell people living in pain that peer support groups are a good thing that they should be seeking out, and yet we really don't have that much academic or scientific information about it. Before we go any further, I'd like to really emphasize how isolating it is to live with chronic pain. Um, I've conducted interviews with people with various types of pain conditions um, through various projects as well, and one thing that keeps coming back is just how alone they feel. In one of the very first interviews that I witnessed, conducted by my now supervisor, Dr. Richard Hovey, um, one participant shared a quote that has stayed with me until now. I don't have one single friend who understands my situation. Let's differentiate chronic pain from suffering due to chronic pain. Chronic pain in this presentation is an umbrella term that includes any pain that you've had for over three months. Um, pain, when we're talking about pain in this presentation, is really the unpleasant physical sensation, whereas suffering is the quote that, you, that we just read together. Suffering is what happens in your mind, and some might talk about soul or spirit due to the pain. And to speak to that, the available literature estimates that up to 66% of people living with pain will at some point experience suicidal ideation. That feeling of being alone in the world is a recurring one for people living in pain. Whenever I conduct an interview with someone living in pain, I know that I'm going to get one iteration or another of people don't really understand. And the impact of that is huge because in the same breath, I might hear something like, oh, that's why I don't really talk about my pain to people or a much more extreme version like, that's why I don't see my friends anymore. So, Pain isolates you, which makes you feel more isolated, which isolates you more, which makes you feel more isolated, and it just spirals down really quickly. Support groups, though, are proof that there are people who understand what it's like to live with pain. In my master's thesis project, we're looking at the impact of peer support group Curvy Girls on teenage girls with scoliosis. And whenever I conduct an interview with them, I just wish that I could bottle up the moment where they tell me how it felt when they found Curvy Girls. Um, one participant in particular um, described herself as quite socially isolated. She reported having few friends and was doing distance learning even before COVID started due to her back pain. Um, she explained to me just how good it felt to know that she wasn't completely alone in her situation. And so there's a need for us in the chronic pain community to shift our understanding of care and healing to include not only the times in which people are in direct health care, so going to medical appointments or tests, but also the times, the times in between those encounters. Um, Remember, pain isolates. So it's hard for people in pain to just get out of the house and socialize while managing their pain on their own. So 
some might say, oh, well, you know, activities like massotherapy or physiotherapy might get them out of the house and help them with, with pain. But I would argue that these are still medicalized relationships. And so even in their time away from direct health care, people living in pain might still see themselves as pain patients. Where are their, their own opportunities to socialize with people who understand what it's like to live with pain, but without the power differential of healthcare provider to patient relationship? And perhaps that would be the biggest gap that could be filled by peer support groups. Now, I can start hearing in uh, the room the thoughts of clinicians, psychologists, psychiatrists, clinic directors thinking, well, I mean, I would love to create a, um, a peer support group for my patients. Anecdotally, that doesn't always work. And because of lack of data, we're not sure why. But we can theorize that a peer support group originating from a clinical actor again becomes a medicalized intervention and not a community initiative. One of the participants in, my, in the Curvy Girls interviews actually looked straight at me through Zoom and said, young people like you and I, we just don't trust people over 30. Now, as a 32-year-old myself, I was really flattered. But more importantly, what this quote highlights is the importance of the in-group when it comes to advice and emotional support. Um, what this participant was telling me was that she trusts the advice of other teenage girls with scoliosis more than she trusts the advice of her care team when it comes to living well with her situation, with her condition. It's really hard to take advice from someone who has very little in common with you and who may not even share the condition that shapes so much of your life. And this suggests that empowerment and belonging are key aspects in ensuring the success of support groups. Now, if you're still with me, you'll have noticed that I haven't talked about our research approach when it comes to these projects. We are using Gadamer's dialogical hermeneutics. If I haven't lost you yet, I don't want to lose you now. What this means is basically just to make meaning through conversation. So if you've ever discussed a book in high school or a movie with friends, or even said the words, well, to me, this song is about such and such, you have practiced dialogical hermeneutics. Um, in the best of cases, you've shared your perspective on a topic uh, with the person or people in front of you. They've done the same, and those perspectives have enriched one another in order to form what Gadamer calls a renewed horizon of understanding. In other words, you have taken a turn together. And so we use this approach so that we, as the chronic pain community, can take a turn together in how we discuss peer support groups for people with pain. We also use this approach specifically to ensure that the stories of people living in pain remain central to the research and the discussions. To conclude, uh, we tell people living in pain to seek out support groups, but we aren't sure how or why they work. Um, in order to gain that understanding, we need to dive beyond scales and numbers and truly look at the lived experience of people living with pain. By understanding the mechanisms that takes, that takes place in these groups, we can actually knowingly, we can understand what makes them successful, but we can knowingly offer one more self-management option to people living in pain. Because let's be clear, uh, peer support groups don't aim to uh, reduce pain, they aim to reduce the suffering caused by pain. By demedicalizing our approach to chronic pain uh, self-management, Support groups can play a pivotal role in connecting people in pain back to their community and helping them achieve a renewed sense of purpose. Thank you.